Blessings to you, our friends. We are the Ancestral Medicine Women, healing from the past, for the present and the future. So, we will talk about a men's issue, and this men's issue is too much sex. It might sound funny, but it's actually very interesting, because the difference between a man and a woman sexually, traditionally, or over time, we shall say, there are a few anomalies with the women and with the men, where the some women like a lot of sex, some men don't like a lot of sex. So there are these anomalies. But normally, not normally, but as traditional over the ages, it has been known that men like to wench, shall we say, and women do can enjoy sex very much. But it is not a compulsion for them to have it regularly, all the time. So then you look at the physiology. And it makes a lot of sense why. For a woman, she is born with all of the eggs intact in her body. They are complete, if you like, when she's in utero. So when she's born, that's it. There's no uh, production line of egg making. They're there. The production line happens, of course, if she keeps pumping out babies, that this is a production line. But the making is is done. For men, they make the sperm, if you like, as and when required. So for them, they are like a factory. They're like a machine in this way. And when you look at it like that, you can see the difference between men and women. If a man is like a factory, Every day producing chocolates for the market. Whatever the market is, they're going to keep producing the chocolates. The conveyor belts will keep going. And the chocolates will keep coming. Just like a man. If the market is there, they will produce for that market. That's what they do. The body is designed in this way. Now, if you look at a factory, and we we will stay with the chocolates. Because chocolates are an aphrodisiac. We will stay with the chocolate. Not the chocolate that you get now, this mass-produced, but the the pure stuff is, is like an aphrodisiac. So we will stay with the chocolates, the factory. Now, if the chocolate factory ran 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 100 years of a century, well, let us not say that. Let us say a score of years, two decades, non-stop kept going. Well, actually, it wouldn't even make it that far because, why? Because the machinery needs to be oiled, it needs to be maintained, it needs to be, parts need to be changed, the staff are sick that produce this. There are many things that are required to make those chocolates come off the conveyor belt and into the market. So, when you look at it like that, now we see the interesting part for men. Because yes, for a man, there is this conveyor belt, this factory working, as and when it is required for the sperm to be made. But the problem is that if it is non-stop or incredibly regular, and then the male does not look after themselves physically with good food, plenty of rest, not a lot of stress from their jobs or from just life, uh, exercise, all of these things. If they are not, and even nourishment of the, of the mind with things that are not their work, books and music, etc. If they are not doing this, then they are just like this chocolate factory that never stops. They're not replenishing. They're not maintaining. They're not resting. They're just continuing. So what does this do to the male body? Yes, when you're in your mid to late teens and into the 30s, it is like a a big party. And and if you can do it, you will do it. And the more you can do it, the better it is. And yes, sometimes these uh, many men and boys, they exercise and they experience, uh, they maintain their bodies. But they do not do it on the level that we are talking about, that 
actually is required to maintain that level of production and going to market. They do not. They might go to the gym. They might play sport. They might eat well. Uh, they might take vitamins, all of these types of things. But they will maybe have a stressful job or they will maybe drink a lot or they may not exercise. So they are not really maintaining their machine to the level or the standard that is required for the amount of production and activity or going to market that they are actually experiencing. Now, when you're in that time, that is the last thing from the man's mind. The last thing. Because they are, it is for them not such, not, uh, not always a mental process. It is a hormonal process. And sometimes they just simply, the hormones take over. Especially at the, at those, at those ages. But then they get older. And then it starts to kick in. And many people say, 30, 35, this is not very old. And that is correct, it is not very old. And yes, a lot of men will still want to have a lot of sex around about this time and, and older. But if they have a very stressful job, working long hours, maybe they have a family, maybe they are still drinking too much, maybe they're not eating well, all of these things, if they are very, very honest, and everybody knows that all of the surveys that are done, there is no honesty in those. Nobody wants to to admit that they maybe have sex once or twice a month. Nobody. They want to say, oh, three or four times a week. Oh, yes, I'm very happily married. I have sex three or four times a week. That is what they want to say. They do not want to admit the other. But in reality, as they get older, men, they lose some of that, they lose the capability. The machine will break down a lot because it has been running for so long it, or it will run slow. Maybe there's not the market anymore. That's a possibility as well. So all of these things are going on. Now, yes, that affects you physically, but where does it really affect you? It really affects you emotionally. That's where it really affects the man, emotionally. Because they might feel that they're not being manly enough. Right? They're not being a man because they can't have as much sex as they want. Maybe they're not as attractive as they were. Or they feel they're not because they're not, the market is different now. All of these things. So it affects them emotionally. And then what happens? It affects them mentally. And then they might start finding excuses. That's when Viagra became something that was marketable because yes there were older men who wanted to uh, have new relationships and what have you but the thought that they hadn't maybe had a very stagnant sex life up until this point for all of these different reasons that they want to get back into the market again but mentally they think they can't do it anymore so they've had this physical wonderland for maybe 20 or 30 years. Then it starts to peter out because they've really worked their body too much. They've overworked their body in this production and then going to market. So then that starts to affect them emotionally because their manhood is called into question. Their very self is called into question. Then that starts to affect the mind that actually maybe they can't do it anymore. If nobody wants to do it with them, maybe... There is more to this than just that I am older or what have you. So then they get to a certain age where they want to do it again. or what. So then they have to take the Viagra because it's in the mind is telling them with this procession of events that has happened that they are no longer able to do it. The other thing which many men do not really consider, especially when they are young because the testosterone is very strong in the body, so it gives them a lot of energy. But having a lot of sex, and we are not talking about two or three times a week. That is not a lot of sex. That is, for a male, average, normal, if you like. But if you are having 
sex every day, two or three times a day, you are going to exhaust your body very quickly. Very quickly. It won't be just that you may or may not be able to have sex or you may not want to have sex or everything that we have said. You will be physically, mentally and emotionally exhausted. So you you will find working difficult. You will find being in social situations difficult. You will find eating, exercising, all of these things difficult. And as we said before, it may not happen in the first 10 years. It may not happen in the first 20 years. But it will happen. And then you will not know what has hit you. Now, we are not advocating that you do not have sex. On the contrary, it is a normal human condition. It is something that brings an enormous amount of joy. But what we are saying is, just like many of the New Age people say, your body is a temple. And for the male, it is a production line. Respect that production line. Maintain it. Nourish it. Oil it. Feed it. But don't just expect that it is going to run and run and run without any work. Look to yourself. Think about yourself. Many men do not do this. They they see their function as uh, it just happens. They get erections. It just happens. So they see this as part of their manhood, as part of their function. But really look at yourself. You're worth looking at. You're worth taking time over yourself to decide for yourself how you want to live your life. Your hormones, they have a mind of their own. They have a mind of their own. But you are in control of the whole. You are in control. And yes, you might want to have sex two or three times a night, several times a week. And this is absolutely fine. But maybe don't do it for 20 years or even 10 years. Just respect yourself. Respect who you are and give back to yourself something as well.